Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna do another beginning watercolor tutorial. So if you are new to watercolor, this is the video for you. We're going to paint a hydrangea and we're going to paint it in a fairly um, slow and easy method. I am using some watercolors from Joy Art. It's a very inexpensive brand of watercolors. So if you need some inexpensive paints, it's a great way to begin. And I've got most of my paints on my palette from last time. I'm gonna add a little hooker's green. So if you get a tube of paint and it's sealed at the end, um, all you do is you put the cap in and it's usually got like a little piercer. And what that's gonna do is poke a hole in the seal there. That way your paint doesn't get dried out. And then you can squirt a little bit of paint onto your palette. Any paint that's left over can be reused. So as long as you haven't contaminated it, you'll be able to go back and reuse that color um, until you've used it up, which is really nice about watercolor as opposed to some other paints that, you know, once they're, um, once your paint has dried, it's no good. We're going to start by sketching on a basic vase and just a few shapes to signify where our flowers are going to be. I have taped a piece of six by nine inch aqua B watercolor paper to a piece of foam core so it's not going to move or buckle while we're painting. So to make a vase, I am going to, um, I'm going to start at the top of the vase about, I think I want this vase to be probably about halfway up the paper. And I am just going to draw a line for the top and a line for the bottom. I'm going to draw a line straight down the middle so I can have kind of a symmetrical uh, shape to work with. And then I am just gently going to make a curved line in like that. Okay, then a trick that I have to help me when I'm drawing something symmetrical is I'll turn my paper around and I'll just draw the same thing on the other side. And I, for me, that is just easier for me to do when I'm trying to draw something symmetrical. Okay, you could just do a straight, you know, a straight kind of cylinder vase if you want to. It doesn't have to be um, tapered at all. Do whatever you like. Okay, I'm just going to give that a curve at the bottom. Down below our eye level, generally we'll see more of a curve and we might see it more straight across if it's if the um, top of the vase is at our eye level. Then I recommend taking an eraser and erasing the lines you don't need. For the flowers themselves, we're going to start with a uh, kind of a large pom-pom, just a circle, very light. This is just going to signify the outside of our hydrangea blossom. We're going to do one over here that's more of an oval and we'll do one over here that's also more of an oval. I'm going to put a few uh, leaves kind of hanging down over the edge. And that will also help if you've got any, um, if your vase isn't perfect, having some leaves hanging down will kind of distract from that fact. So throw in as many leaves as you want to. Plus they just, they kind of give you kind of something interesting to look at. Now I'm going to put a stem in the vase and you can even have a leaf in the vase too. All right, now I like to put some background in. Now, we, I kept those those circles here really light because we are we don't really want to see those lines. They're just more for our own um, our own guidelines. Now, I like to have some color in the background, especially if I've gone through the trouble of taping down my paper, because then when we remove our tape, we have a really pretty uh, border to look at. So I'm just going to wet my paper and I'm going to apply a wash. Now I'm going to want to keep this pretty light because I am going to be painting flowers over it. So most of the color I'm going to put in is going to be around the edges and the corners. So just give your paper a nice even, um, even application of clean water. And I'm going to grab some yellow ochre. You can use yellow ochre or raw sienna. Naples yellow, whatever you happen to have in your paint set that's going to do the trick. I'm going to get some of that up here above my flower balls. They're the pom-poms that I put in for the flower. A little bit in the vase because your paper, I mean um, glass will reflect pretty much everything that you have surrounding. I'm going to grab some burnt umber. You could also use burnt sienna or whatever brown you prefer. Fairly uh, diluted. I'm going to put some of that down towards the bottom and I'm going to go right through that vase. And I'm just going to go straight across so it looks a little bit like we might have like a table or a windowsill or something, but it's going to be faded out because it's going to be more in the background. 
I am going to add some of the colors that I plan on using. So I like to get those colors in right off the bat. I'm just going to slide this over a bit. Uh, please excuse my <laughs> my items if they slide around because I am working on my Teflon mat. Um, my husband recently painted my work table so I want to try to protect that as much as I can from splatters until that paint's had a good time to really cure. So I flicked in some rose. I'm going to flick in some of the violet color and that's okay to get that on top of where the flowers are going to be because we're going to be using those colors in the flowers. This is really worth the effort when you go and you take the um, you take the tape off and you can see those pretty uh, those pretty colors. And I like to have this kind of loose background anyway, and it can kind of take the preciousness away from your project, so you won't feel so um, you won't feel like it has to be so perfect if you've got you've already got some colors down. You know, you, if you have just a plain white background, sometimes you'll drop some paint or you'll drop, you'll get a water spot or, you know, you're bringing your brush over and you accidentally get some water where you don't want it. And then it's really disappointing because you've worked so hard and your perfectly white background is now all messed up. So if you have any puddles, uh, I like to kind of twirl it around like this, let the paint kind of flow and see what happens. Um, if you have any puddles though, you do want to blot them because puddles will turn into, um, will turn into kind of these ruffled edge blooms and sometimes it works out great but other times it doesn't and what you can also do is just kind of go along the edge of the tape with your uh, cloth there your paper towel because that's where your your paint and water will tend to pool and you can usually just wipe that right up there and then you won't have any surprises that you don't want when you're you know after your paint dries you can see what a lovely bit of um, of soft background we're getting there and it's going to dry lighter so it's going to be extremely subtle now something you might want to do and generally i use a paper towel for this but i'm going to see if this rag will will work um, you can lift up a little bit of a highlight on the edge of your vase the reason I often use a paper towel is because um, paper towels will absorb more than a cotton cloth. That's the rag I've been using for a few months. I just keep washing it in the sink when it's when it's dirty, so I don't end up getting paint or ink on my like in my laundry. But um, the more you use it, the better it gets. But still, a paper towel works really good for blotting out highlights. So generally, that's what I use. All right, so now we're going to let this dry. You can either let it dry on its own or you can use a hair dryer or a heat tool to speed up the process. Now you can see how much lighter the painting is uh, from wet to dry. So just kind of keep that in mind. The wetter your paper is, the more it's going to shift when it dries. Now I'm going to use the flat brush that comes in the set. This is just a half inch flat, so or number seven flat. If you um, if you don't have this set, that's fine. Use whatever you have. And I am going to grab, um, I'm going to start off with some of this ultramarine blue. Now I just squeezed this out fresh, so I have to add water to it and just make sure that I don't have any clumps. So whenever you using your paint fresh you just want to be aware of that so I'm just going to start with the ultramarine blue on its own I am going to make a little dot just to kind of signify where the center of this flower is going to be and then I'm just going to make myself a little a little uh, petal so I'm just kind of dragging it across so I end up with this little kind of diamond shape okay so that's going to be our first little flower so I can go ahead and I can pull those uh, little diamonds into the center. Okay, so when you're looking at something like a hydrangea, you have a bunch of, um, you have a bunch of little flowers that are combining to make a big flower. Okay, so what you want to do is just kind of break that down to the most um, easiest shapes that you can. So I'm going to do a little diamond there. I picked up a little rose this time just by making little kind of diagonal dashes you'll end up with these little like these little four petal flowers and when you put a bunch of those in together you'll have the appearance of a um, of a hydrangea so I'm doing I'm just starting off by doing a bunch of of uh, kind of front facing flowers try not to get your paint too um, too dark to begin with Every petal's gonna be a little different, so don't stress. 
This is fun, right? Not stressful. We'll do a little more pink on this one. Make the little dot in the center if you want to, or you don't have to, because we can go in and put little yellow dots in the center when we're done. So if you feel like that helps you, then do it. If you don't, if you want to make sure it's going to be nice and light for you to put your yellow dots in later, then you can leave it the way it is. Now, once you have a variety of these, I try to put as many of the front facing ones in as I can. And you can turn your paper around. I'm trying, I was trying to keep it fairly, um, fairly upright so that when you're looking at it, you can kind of see the composition, but you can turn it around so that you are having an easy time to create those, those petals. Then what you can do is you can kind of go through and you can add petals here and there. So you're just kind of filling it in. Your brain is going to fill in the rest of the information that you need here. Just kind of go in and sneak in the petals. So see how I'm doing that? I'm just making little kind of diagonal marks with my brush. Just little dashes. I'm just dragging those little dashes. Um, I can grab a little bit of another color. If I feel like I've got too many that are blue, I can add a little bit of more pink. And it can help you differentiate some of the... Uh, some of the petals from one another. And then I would just go in, maybe mix it up a little bit darker and just kind of go in and just put a few little pats of the darker color just to kind of make it look nice and full. Now the reference photo that I've linked to um, has a picture of, it's like three hydrangeas like we have here. Um, I'm going to add one's a little more pink and one's a little more blue over here just so they stand up from one another. The reference photo that is linked up is going to be more, they're all kind of more of the, the blue variety. So for this, I'm going to grab a little bit of that violet, add it in here so I have a darker color. And that's going to stand out a little bit better because it's going to be darker and it's going to be in back. So I'm just going to, for this one, I'm only going to have a few dominant flowers. I pretty much just want the suggestion of the flowers back here. So if I had a, if I wanted to do maybe one that's kind of more prominent and the other ones will just be kind of little little pats of color. Could add maybe a little bit of that cerulean in there too. That will give it a little bit of interest. Because we're going to be able to see some stem kind of coming up in there so I don't want to fill that up too much but just little pats. And I got a leaf coming through there, so I'm just being careful that I don't cover that all up. And I can always go fill in more later. And then over here, we're gonna add uh, some more rows. I'm using that center area to mix, but notice how I'm not getting all this paint into that main blob of the ultramarine blue. That's because I don't want to waste that. If I don't, uh, I'm not going to use all that up. That's That would do like 10 paintings like this because watercolor goes very far. If you are um, a beginner to watercolor, maybe you're coming here because you just wanted to uh, a quick and easy project. Um, you know, I just want to, it's probably going to sound so redundant to some of you guys, but please be patient because some of our friends that are painting with us today are beginners. So we want to make sure that, that they can, you know, that they can follow along. So I apologize if it's all repeat information for some of you. See how it's easier when you just move your paper around a little bit? Grab some more with a little bit more pink. And all it is, all we're doing is making little diamond shapes. That's all there is to it. I tend to be pretty heavy handed myself with watercolor. So it's a good, uh, this is a really good practice for me because I'm forcing myself to kind of paint these very muted um, hydrangeas and uh, to try to keep my palette muted where I tend to go dark, especially with fresh paint like this is a really nice practice for me. So, um, I hope it's helpful for you too. And I'm just gonna, I have some leaves sketched in there, so I'm just gonna pull a few little petals around the leaf just to 
give them a little bit of a uh, little bit of depth if you can kind of throw you know leaves around kind of petals going in and out between leaves it just gives you a nice nice effect I think I will throw a little bit of violet in there I'm just gonna pick up some purple in the corner of my brush and just drizzle in a little bit now like I mentioned before um, things dry a little bit lighter so don't be afraid if you think it's a little bit dark the dark uh, little dark that we're putting here is going to give it some depth okay the next thing we're going to do is work on the vase a little bit since the uh, we'll let the the flowers dry and I'm going to start by actually putting the stem in the vase so I'm going to pick up some of this hooker's green I really like the hooker's green in this set um, but you can use sap green if you're not using the set because the hooker's green in this set does look a lot like your um, customary sap green so I'm going to paint this leaf here And I can also throw a little bit of reflection in there. I'm also going to paint some of the leaves up here, um, mainly using the hooker's green, but I also like to get a little bit of a shadow color. So I'll load up my flat brush with the hooker's green and then I will get just a corner of it into the ultramarine. And that's going to give me kind of a, a deep, dull shadow. And so then I can go up here and I can sneak in a leaf like that. Now the key I think to making the leaves look lively is to change it up a little bit. So here I will load up with the hooker's green and some yellow ochre and make this leaf out here a little bit brighter. And I really press down my brush when I want that fat part of the leaf and then I can just bring it down there and just kind of let it taper. And so every time I load up the brush, I try to just have it be a little bit, uh, a little bit different in color. If I want to add a little shadow to that one, like right underneath the uh, plant, right underneath the flowers, I can just go right in with the with the um, with the ultramarine blue and just kind of tap that color in there, right onto the wet leaf. And just kind of let it let it flow and fade out on its own. Blot the ex excess paint off my brush, and I can spread it a little bit if I need to. Now, student grade paints are not going to flow quite as well as artist grade paint. So, um, if you're following along with the tutorial and you see like the paint just kind of flowing, just like it hits the paper and it just goes whoosh, you're generally not going to get that same effect with your student grade paints, but they will do quite a bit. And if you kind of play to their strengths. Um, you can really do a lot with them and it's a great way to practice. I know a lot of instructors will tell you, you know, don't even bother unless you have artist grade paints, but I think that's very discouraging because not everybody, you know, has the budget for expensive paints and, you know, even if you do, you can still feel like they're very precious and you don't want to waste them. Now I had set my hand down on my paper when I was painting those flowers and my hand was wet and I left a little, a couple little water spots there. So I think I'm going to try to add a couple leaves just to, um, just to kind of help disguise them a little bit. And so because I did it over that, so I got a little, I got a, uh, I'm a mess today. I've got blue paint there and apparently I smudged it there. So I think I'm just going to try to get another one over here. Right off the edge. And let's see, I've got one over here. I'm just going to see if I can sneak one out. This is pretty far to be pulling it away from the, uh, the bouquet, but I just didn't want to have that, um, I just didn't want that like smudge on my paper and you can also throw in like with a chisel edge of your brush see how it's like nice and flat there if I hold it you see how skinny that is you can go in and throw in little like stems within the the flowers because all of these little flowers all these little blossoms are connected to the main stem so we can put those in there we can actually add another stem in here into the vase 
grab one of these round brushes from the set. There's two round brushes in here. I'm just going to go, uh, it doesn't really matter which one you use because rounds, you can usually get a big variety of shapes of, of sizes from the tip all the way to the belly of the brush, but I think I'll grab this one. And I'm going to grab that yellow ochre because I like to keep using the same colors over and over again because it just gives you a harmony and continuity in the painting. And on some of these flowers where I can see that they're kind of like facing forward, I'm just going to do little kind of yellow dots. Not everyone because your brain will fill in, fill in the blanks, but if you've got a few spots where it looks like, yep, those flowers could be facing forward, I'm going to go ahead and just give them a little, a little dab here and there. And just also that yellow is the opposite of purple, so it just makes it makes it stand out a little bit more. And you can also, um, while you have this round brush out, you can look around and say, hmm, I wonder if I want to maybe add a little bit of um, a little shading or dimension to any of these leaves, maybe fatten some of them up or add a little bit of a like a little bit of a shadow. Like this got a little bit fuzzy where it came in contact with some purple, those purple flowers that weren't quite dry yet. So I'm just gonna try to smooth that out. Um, hopefully it doesn't get too fuzzy on me. You can also throw some stems in there. And you can darken up any stems that you want to. This is really lovely. I think it's really a great beginner project. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to dry everything. You can use a heat tool, you can use a hair dryer, or you can just leave it be for a few minutes so everything can dry. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. So now I'm gonna go back to that flat brush and I am going to add some water to the cerulean blue. I'm actually really pleased with how these inexpensive paints do rewet. They haven't like broken up and cracked on my palette and that happens quite a bit um, with your lower quality paints or less expensive paints I should say. So, um, so I'm really pleased that these are staying really nice on my palette. So I've made this really thin. I would say probably the consistency of like skim milk. See how watery that is? Now the benefit of using a ceramic palette or a plate like a glass ceramic plate is that you can get your paint really watery so you can really dilute it and see the color that you have when you spread it out like that and it's not going to beat up sometimes like a, a commercially made plastic palette will beat up on you and you won't really be able to see what your color is until you bring it over to your paper so you know that that's nice and any you know any ceramic plate is going to do that whether you spend 99 cents for it at the dollar tree or you you know go to the art store and you buy a, a ceramic butcher tray for twenty dollars it it's they're gonna work the same way which is which is really nice see I'm turning my paper because I want to make sure that I can get a nice um, nice crisp edge now I have gone over my highlight that I had blotted out earlier but that's all right I'm not gonna worry about it we can always go in with a little bit of white paint if we need to or we can scrub out a highlight later if we want to and something else I like to do when I have something that's translucent like glass is I will bring a little color onto the table area. So what I'm, I just kind of bring out some water and then I will add some of that color to it. So it looks like the light is kind of shining into the room, the sunlight shining into the room and casting some color through that glass. And I think that's such a beautiful look. And sometimes I'll concentrate it a little bit more right where the where the the kind of that, that shadow meets the glass like that. Now you can also add a little bit more concentrated color towards the edge of the vase because generally if you do have like a tinted uh, glass vase you see the color darker at the edges because you're seeing layers of glass. You're not looking straight through the glass. You're looking through um, layers of glass on the side. So I like to go in and, and add that. And then we're gonna have to let that dry before we can do anything else to that vase. If you do see that um, you can lift up some highlight, you can go ahead and do that. But I think that the paper's probably stained at this point, so if we do want a bright white highlight, we'll have to go in and add that later. Uh, something else I like to do that you don't have to do, but if you enjoy the look, then, um, then it's kind of fun. I like to spatter on some color, so I might take some of this color here that I just put on the, on the vase and just give a little spatter here and there. 
again totally optional if you don't like this look don't do it don't do it just because i'm doing it if you don't like it then you you can always wait and think about it too so if you're not sure if you like the look of the spatters you can wait and do it tomorrow after you've kind of given your given your brain a chance to get used to what you've painted already hindsight is 2020 or waiting till tomorrow <laughs> i should say waiting till tomorrow to make any drastic spattering decisions is probably a good idea like i'm not sure if i like that or not but if it's too bright you can always go in and blot it a little bit too so it's just background all right i'm gonna dry this and then uh we can take the tape off and see what we have and see if we want to put any finishing touches on it a tip that I have, um, if your tape is kind of sticky and difficult to remove, is to try to remove it after you've just dried it, because warm tape removes a lot easier than cool uh, than a cold tape. So if you've had that situation where your paint just your tape seems to be too sticky, and also folding it back on itself like that makes it much easier to remove because it seems to it seems not to be is so much tension on the paper when you fold it completely back on itself so if we had a white background we wouldn't have this very satisfying um tape removal where we see a beautiful uh white edge and i i don't know what the, I, that never gets old i remember that was like my favorite thing when i first learned how to watercolor paint when i was seven it was my favorite thing i loved seeing that nice bright white edge when i finished a painting so there's a couple things that I want to do. I am going to add a little uh, more cerulean blue along the edges. So I'm going to use my, uh, I'll use my round brush and I'm just going to blot off the excess because I don't want it too watery, but I don't want clumps. And I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit of more concentrated color just on some of the edges. And I can add a little bit here on this like kind of a lips area on the bottom of the vase that just kind of gives it a little bit more of a three-dimensional feel i can also take this brush and grab any of the colors that i feel like i need a little sharpening up i can grab some of this rose and like if i have a like see how that petal it looks kind of like just a kind of a smush i can go in and i can make it less smushy i think i just kind of dry brushed that area a little bit and if it's too dark remember it's going to dry a little bit later but that looks a little dark to me so i'm just blotting it if i feel like i want a little bit more of a certain color here and there i can go and just gently add it on but i do want that to be pretty watery now keep in mind that with student quality paints they can tend to lift easier which means you could go paint something on top of something else and then it might pull up pull the paint up a little bit so you just want to kind of keep that in mind so that you don't end up um you know pulling any paint off of your your masterpiece okay and i'm going in with just a little bit dark uh in and about here just to give it a little bit of shadow and depth now i really don't think i want to do too much to this i think i like the way it is just as it is but i do i would like a white highlight now this is completely up to you and um some watercolorists like to use white in their paintings and others don't i generally don't but sometimes i like to have it in there like if i couldn't reserve a highlight or whatnot so i'm just going to put out just a pea-sized drop of this because i know i don't really want to save that on my palette i just want enough for this project so i mean seriously just an eensy weensy little um little spot there see not very much at all um, i think that white paint usually does work a little bit better when you use it straight from the um from the tube and i'm just going to load up my brush here i'm using my round brush and i am just going to do a couple little slices of highlight especially down over that um leaf that's behind the glass because i want it to look like it's behind the glass oh, i need a little more water because see how my 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 line is very broken there i need a little more water so that it will give me a smooth line now your white watercolor is not going to be as opaque as say an, a white acrylic or a white paint pen or a gel pen so uh if you do decide you have done the white and you're like oh it's not quite as as opaque as i want you could go in with a gel pen or a white uh paint pen paint marker and that would work a little bit better so um so there you have it okay now let's dry this real quick so you can see how that dries because sometimes it does get a little bit more transparent 
okay it did fade a little bit so you can go over with a little bit more you just want to be careful that you don't put a real thick application that's going to crack because your paper is flexible and the paint really isn't that flexible so if you had a thick application of this it could crack on you and you can go in and put a little bit more if you want to and there now something that i think this needs is a little bit of shadow um underneath there that's not just the blue so i'm going to take my ultramarine blue and my burnt umber and make myself a gray i generally don't use the pre-made grays or blacks just because i don't like the way they look they look very unnatural to me and i got a little too much water on there and i'm going to add just a little bit of shadow underneath my vase here so it's just a tiny little uh little detail but i think it does help and you can also add that anywhere you feel like it might need it in the vase. I probably wouldn't go into the flowers because it might make it them feel a little bit less fresh, but definitely in the vase. And there you go. You've painted your first beginner hydrangea painting. And there you can see it all done. It was a lot of fun. It only took about a half an hour. So I hope you found a little time in your day to paint today. Maybe you're saving it for the weekend and you have a little time to relax. Um, enjoy it. Painting is so much fun and so rewarding and I hope you enjoyed. I'll have links to all the supplies I used in the video description for you to check out. Please give me a thumbs up before you go and let me know if you want to see more beginner watercolor tutorials. And until next time, happy crafting!